Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ati Allah Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisa da'ifu miskinu zahal and jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are in existence. Alhamdulillah with all the people whom are posting and sharing and, and spreading these knowledges and these teachings and the immense amount of reach that it comes across and the people that uh, come across and always a reminder that fiqr and religion and common sense and the heart they all coordinate. If they don't then whatever that person is practicing is incorrect. That the sama when we whirl, we whirl with the heart so that the body follows the heart. The hadara is focusing on the heart, the zikr is focusing on the heart. Everything is based on the qalb and everything is based on an ishq and muhabbat. We said what distinguishes true religion from what people think they're practicing is their love. And this religion is based on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad It is our foundation. The foundation we talked about of humility and good character is all directed towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because we're aiming for faith. And what Prophet described in fiqr of what is faith? When he described to Sayyidina Umar Farooq salam, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself. Then the father and the, and the son means that any familiar love is not in comparison to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And we are moving towards an ocean of faith. So everything is common sense but many people lack a heart, they lack common sense. And they put in its place what they believe to be Islamic law, jurisprudence, fiqr and they think that they're going to approach the heavens with their head and that they'll understand something new. And the only way to approach the heavens is through the heart, it has to be. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Be through muhabbat. It has to be a foundation of humility and, and an immense amount of ishq and love. And when you enter into something of love, common sense in love, guides everything. That in this love for Sayyidina Muhammad we enter into the events of Karbala and begin to think that how much love we have for Prophet And the ground and the soil that Prophet walked on is holy, is, is beyond measure. How all the nation would love to go to Medina and touch something that Prophet touched, to, to walk where Prophet walked. This was the faith before, this is supposed to be the faith continuing. That when we have this level of ishq and love then we have to ask ourselves that what Prophet felt in these events? What type of character and immense patience that Prophet exhibit when he kissed Imam al-Husayn on his neck as a child 
continuously kissing and kissed Imam al-Hasan on his lips for one day he would be poisoned through his lips and for one day Imam al Hussain would be cut on his neck and his head with a sword. And how much it must have saddened Sayyidina Muhammad that his nation would do this to his family and to his grandchildren in which he held and he loved and they played around Prophet means the immensity of that love and that emotion is the believer's responsibility. That you have to have your heart to guide you, not your brain. Not your brain to tell you things and to confuse you but the heart must guide the believer. That when you love someone more than you love yourself you can't imagine how did they touch a hair from something he loved. And how much she tried to give a warning that, please I leave behind Qur'an and my family. And that was a sign that, if you love me, love them. If you love me, watch over them. Means you have to see that light and that love and that ishq. And Allah taught the same that Allah was telling creation, if you love me, then you must follow and love Sayyidina Muhammad For if you truly understood and you fell in love with Prophet it was Allah that you loved. Because the light of Allah the love and ishq of Allah resides within the wujud and the essence of Sayyidina Muhammad Those who came against Prophet they came against Allah and that's when Allah was telling Prophet don't be sad, they're not against you but they're against me because he took to it personally that why these people are so harsh, why these people are so rough and Allah teaching that they're coming against you because my love for you and if they love you I will love them. So this is the story of love. So how can we love Sayyidina Muhammad and imagine on a day and on these last five, six days when they had entered the family into the region of Karbala and they came for trade and for dawah, they didn't come for weaponry and fighting. And when they were denied access to water and they see the events are going to become not good, we'll go back, we'll go back to Medina and they said, no. They had already made their mind up that they were going to slaughter the holy family of Sayyidina Muhammad whom amongst them are his grandchildren that have the shaykh and the likeness of Prophet whom they saw Prophet carrying and holding Imam al Hussain kissing Imam al Hussain The household and the women of the family are in those tribes and in those tents. What kind of people would do such a thing and how would they find a justification in such a horrific act? And ashiqeen, ashiqeen and lovers, why they cry? Because they cry at the feeling of what happened, that why did they do such a horrific act to the one whom I love more than I love myself and what Prophet must have felt. From whatever station that Prophet is looking at and seeing the horrific nature of a community in which he gave his everything, his, his entire love for that community and look what they're doing to his holy family. They're not killing like a, like a war, they killed like barbarians in which they slaughtered and cut the pieces of the body and they slaughtered from children all the way to the adults. And the children died first and the adults were watching. Imam Hussain that all the younger went in and then in the final battle Imam and Hussain entered in. What Prophet must have felt to witness that? And that's what believers are supposed to meditate and think. And how, how a community can do this to the family of their Prophet? 
and then profess that they believe in Allah and they're the people of faith and, and right character. And then think to ourselves that how and what Prophet must have felt of a betrayal and that every year we enter into that same example where Prophet is looking at his nation and this thought and the feeling is that my nation has forgotten me and as a result of forgetting me they forget my family, they forget to feel a sadness, they forget the station of love and muhabbat. And people now talk like a logical, well why are you to be sad they achieved immense stations? But what they achieve is not your business. It's like I throw somebody from a plane and say, I threw you from the plane but at least you got a big reward from Allah. No, well, we don't care what the, the reward, that's between Allah and the servant. The question is, why aren't you sad? Why don't you feel a remorse and a sadness for what happened? to the family of the most beloved in creation and how the family and how these people were slaughtered in a desert without access to water. They denied them water and they could have used their own spiritual ability to bring that water. Why to kill them in such a way? Why to, to cause such a grief and such a horrific harm? And that's the danger, that's the danger that people are facing now that they don't have that sense of love, they don't have a sense of compassion and they view these as just events in history that came and went and every year of Ashura I believe the heart of Prophet is continuously sad that today there are people whom are forgetting the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and everywhere his Ahlul Bayt and descendants of his Ahlul Bayt are being killed, are being harmed are being tortured. You don't think that that saddens the Prophet of Allah who's the container of ishq and love that sees till today that they're forgetting me, they don't love me more than themselves, they don't praise upon me, they don't pray for me and look how they treat those whom love me. And that's the danger that we entered in now into the time of Sufiyan in which a people will rise and say that, oh we don't need these people who love Ahlul Bayt and that naming your children after Ahlul Bayt they will hunt them down. What kind of people are coming that would target that type of love? There are people whom are void of ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result they attack everything dear to the Rasul. Anything that's dear to Prophet their target is that and that's the danger. That's why Mawlana Shaykh was teaching that you shed a tear for them. Sit and think how much you love Prophet and how did this happen? How is it happening now and why is it that people are not sad? If somebody's child is hurt they call and text for weeks that grant them a recovery, pray for his recovery, pray for this, pray for that. And then what do you think about the slaughtering of a holy family where there are no cameras? There are no videotapes, there are no images to keep sending all over the world so they don't forget. But it's the responsibility of Ahlul Bayt and Ashiqeen to revive that, that don't let that to be forgotten, don't let what happened in that desert to be forgotten, don't let the blood of these innocent Ahlul Bayt to be forgotten. It's our responsibility that we owe to Sayyidina Muhammad that we don't let it to be forgotten. What was done was not right, what was done was horrific. If someone doesn't cry, doesn't say a word, doesn't propagate these videos, these articles about these events of Karbala, the haqqaiq and the realities of Karbala, 
Then when difficulty and hardship enters at your door, don't cry out to anyone, don't ask for anyone's najat, don't ask for anyone's help. For you couldn't cry for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad and his holy family. Do unto yourself as… do unto your brother as you want for yourself. Everything in the fiqr of our deen is about that. Everyone wants to cry for their family and their children and want to promote all over internet when something happens. And for this massacre of the family of Sayyidina Muhammad they don't want to take the post. And then they say, why is there to cry? They achieved the station, achieving station not your business. Your business is the sadness and the event of what happened, don't let the world forget what happened for they're about to do it again. And when they come after your family and your children there'll be nobody to cry for you because you should close your mouth at that time and say, oh look at the station that my f- slaughtered family has achieved. Means every person want people to cry for them. But when we ask and teach that, no, no, cry for those whom greater than us, more blessed than us and look how the world treated them. Look how what happened in this dunya to these ashiqeen. These are the birds of paradise, the paradise that we wish to walk in. How will we go before them, greet them in their paradises ask and, and ask that grant us access to your paradises, let us to drink from your fountains to sit in your associations. How could we ask to do that and we didn't cry here for them? We cried only for our children and only our… for only our family. How can we walk in their paradises? They look to you and say, don't you remember what we did? You didn't shed a single tear for how we died? But now you want to take from these kawtha, take from these realities. Common sense guides the heart. Nobody has to teach your brain. Your heart tells you that common sense is, these people suffered. These are the people whom I love dearer than myself and I have to let everyone know this was wrong, these events were wrong. These are the immense realities that Imam al Hussain brought into this world and till the day of judgment Allah will keep people to remember His accomplishment. We pray that Allah grant us from these lies and from this love, the immensity of these blessings, that these are not something that can be achieved and the the, the immensity of the, the sorrow that it puts within the heart of people and they should govern their lives with love and ishq and common sense. Common sense is everything. Then somebody was, was bold enough to say that, no, shaykh doesn't know fiqr and he says that you shouldn't have weddings on Muharram and I said, in the first 10 days you have to be a lunatic to have a wedding in Muharram. You have to have something completely off in your mind and in your heart must be dead if you think like that. That are you telling me that if the shaykh and his family were all slaughtered in 10 days of Muharram, those are the 10 days that you would choose to have a wedding where you would dance and celebrate while somebody was slaughtered on those days? It's common sense, it's common sense. That out of respect for Sayyidina Muhammad and his blessed family, I'm not going to dance and celebrate and put such a joyous occasion of a wedding or a ceremony on such a day. I would wait till after, out of this whole world and 360 days, why would you celebrate and jump up and down on those 10 days? Like a Yazid? Like you're happy with something? Common sense, never in the history of this reality was that done. Means only Allah their ishq and muhabbat and love guides them, guides them with an ihtiram and a respect for Sayyidina Muhammad 
and that never to cause offence to Prophet to have an understanding and respect. No doubt these are immense days of lights and blessings and as a result of this horrific events these are the days in which to commemorate what was done, the sacrifice that was done and all zawiyas to give out haleem and food to people for the sake of Imam al Husayn as salam that he intercede for us on these days. That's what we said when we reach towards the end of this nation and this Sufiani is to appear very soon. We reached into our jahaliya in which the nation completely forgot their deen and they go back into a time of arrogance and when they celebrate days they're not supposed to celebrate. We described before on Ramadan the day of Eid, the night of Eid, the nation is to stay in remembrance and worshipness and all the way to the time of Eid to be in worshipness to receive the blessings of Ramadan and what the nation does now 90% they have parties on the last night of Ramadan. When they go out to bazaars and celebrate but that wasn't the nation, the nation was to stay in remembrance and zikr and ibadah to be paid the benefit and the barakah of Ramadan means that all of these things are lost. And what becomes commonplace and what they think, no we should be able to do everything at every time, no, no sir, you're completely wrong and your heart must be dead. There's no celebration on these 10 days, there's commemoration and remembrance of what was sacrificed and for the love and the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad that shed a tear for this family, give a remembrance, give water and give food for their remembrance. For a day will come when suffering and hardship enters your door and there'll be nobody to cry for you. Nobody will hear your tears and your shouts. If you were dead to the reality of Prophet and that your heart was dead to the ishq and love and muhabbat of Ahlul Bayt. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati wa amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa. Wa bi siri Surat Al-Fatiha